Good afternoon. I'm Everett, and uh, this is my new science project video series. Well, not really. It's um, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different uh, with this uh, next series. I'm going to be reviewing a uh, Badger Model 200 Detail Airbrush. And I'm going to be combining uh, this review um, with a uh, sort of a video blog, um, so to speak. Um, so because my, um, well, you may be asking, well, you know, what, what are my qualifications for reviewing one of these things or working with an airbrush? And to be honest, absolutely nothing. I'm as green as a freshly mowed lawn when it comes to airbrushing. Uh, so this is going to be uh, kind of a, a review and a video blog of my experiences with learning how to use an airbrush. And uh, uh, hopefully through this series, if you've been a little gun-shy about uh, getting into airbrushing, uh, this might uh, inspire you to do so. As uh, I learn, um, you can learn with me. Uh, so... Um, and uh, I had a, I'd gotten an airbrush a while back at a model railroad show. It was a, it was a mistake. It was a cheapo one. I think I paid like forty bucks for the kit. Got a can of air, a regulator, a hose, and the airbrush, and a little uh, jar um, for siphoning off the paint, and it never worked. And that was about eight years ago. So, uh, and I got this little uh, beauty here. Um, a guy named uh, Ron Pare uh, of the site called Scratch Builders Guild. Uh, sent me an email, asked me if I would uh, write some articles for a site on um, weathering and or any other topics I felt like writing and uh, then he asked me if I'd uh, go ahead and uh, review this airbrush so he sent it to me and that's when I decided okay you know let me go ahead and make the plunge you know since I'm reviewing it uh, buy the rest of the equipment and uh, just go for it uh, so uh, that's what this uh, video series will be about. So I uh, hope you enjoy it. Um, I think I'm going to learn something, and uh, hopefully you'll learn something too. And when I got this hairbrush, I realized I was going to have to get some um, accessories to go with it, like uh, the compressed air and the hoses and the paints and uh, other sort of stuff like that. So um, oftentimes you can get uh, buy an airbrush as uh, part of a kit. Now this particular model I've seen in kits, um, fairly simple kits, costing anywhere between oh sixty five to seventy five dollars on the internet. But uh, you, there's different kits out there with uh, Differing uh, degrees of stuff that they give you. You know, some kits include the air, some don't. Some kits, you know, include little paint cups, and others don't. So uh, the, the prices that you'll see on the internet uh, may vary. But uh, um, you know, if you, if you get a whole kit, you know, your uh, the task will be a little bit simpler. But uh, you know, because you'll have everything there that you need. Uh, but if not, if you're doing piecemeal like me in this situation, well, of course, you first need your airbrush. Uh, then you need some propellant and uh, for um, powering this thing and uh, this particular brand uh, comes in two sizes uh, and I got the larger size I think it was something like 10 bucks uh, for that so uh, let me widen the view out here so you can see what I got okay I got the propellant here got the airbrush uh, next thing you need is gonna need a regulator and this uh, screws onto the top of the can of air and you'll see me do that as I uh, as part of this video series I'll get everything set up and you can watch as I do it uh, so got a regulator and uh, I've got this little uh, uh, quarter ounce paint cup uh, and that uh, fits on like here on the airbrush so that's for uh, painting in small batches so that was like, uh, I think it was like about six bucks for that. And uh, some glass jars uh, for holding paint. And uh, that was uh, maybe about a buck twenty. Uh, you could probably you know, find plastic ones for cheaper too if you were trying to, you know, budget conscious. And uh, one of these uh, siphons uh, that will fit into jars like these. So you can, uh, you know, have, uh, if you have a lot of uh, 
paint um, use uh, fairly often. You can just uh, fill the glass jar with paint and stick one of these things on and then you can just attach it to your spray gun and uh, be good to go. And of course these are all interchangeable. Clean them out, transfer them to another color if you want. Uh, these are fairly cheap too, like two or three bucks. And of course you're going to need some thinner for Thinning, thinning down your paint. Um, you don't want to use the paint straight from the jar because it's uh, already pretty thick and uh, you want to thin it down some for use with an airbrush. Um, so I believe it's like a, I have to, I'll have to review this, it's like a three, to one, three parts paint to one part thinner to get the right consistency for an airbrush. I have to re uh, double check my facts and if I'm wrong I'll correct myself but uh, uh, well, you're definitely going to need some of that. So and of course you're going to need some paints um, these are some uh, paints I got uh, at the uh, uh, hobby store I have some others on order uh, there's uh, different brands around there I know the brand that I hear the most often is the Floquil paints and uh, at least that's what I read about uh, most often in articles oh yeah I use Floquil for this but there's other brands out there and I couldn't tell you the virtues of uh, one or the other, but uh, I have some Floquil on order. This is Model Master, um, by the way. I've got a few of these, and uh, my Floquils are coming in next week, so uh, I'll probably um, get started on uh, some projects uh, next week uh, in my next uh, video uh, uh, set of videos. So, uh, anyway, that's it for supplies. And uh, I can think of anything else during the course of this that I forgot. And I'm sure there's things that I'll forget just because this is all uh, pretty new to me. So um, I will say so in subsequent videos. So anyway, that's it for the... Oh, yeah, yeah, I almost forgot. <laughs> A hose, okay? A hose that goes from the regulator into the bottom of the airbrush to power it. Uh, so, okay, now I think I've uh, covered everything you need. So, um, I'll uh, go on to the next video, in which um, I'll discuss uh, uh, basically the construction of this uh, airbrush and uh, take it apart because you're going to have to clean it at some point um, beyond just uh, running some paint thinner through it uh, to clean it out, but you'll have to take it apart and give it a thorough cleaning once in a while, so uh, you may as well learn how to take this thing apart properly. So anyway, I'll see you in the next video.